Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. Today I'm building a fairly large Victorian style home in the world of Forgotten Hollow and this is going to be a generations family home for a few different generations of vampires. I thought this was a really fun idea. I feel like a lot of us are in the mood to build family homes right now as infants are right around the corner and so is the Growing Together expansion pack, and I thought it would be a really fun idea to do like a generation's home for vampires. Uh, I was imagining there were parents, grandparents, and kids in this house, plus one of those kids is a little bit older and has a baby of their own. So there's quite a few generations in this home. I believe there are four generations. Yeah, four generations in this home. Uh, so it's a pretty big one. I believe it's a four bedroom, three bathroom house. We shall see when we get to the inside. Plus it has an attic and a basement. Uh, so there is a lot of space for uh, this family to grow. If you decide to have a bigger family in this home, there are some spaces you could definitely renovate to be for a bigger family. Uh, but if you do like this build and you would like to download it, it will be available on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EA ID, which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You can also find it under the hashtag Miss Griffey and that information will also be in the description down below as well. Uh, so right here, I'm trying to figure out what shape I want the exterior to be because I kind of wanted these diagonal walls under the roof, but I also kind of wanted to have a usable attic space. So I was trying to do my best to figure out how to make that look okay and function and we get there in the end and the attic space is mostly just storage and I think I add an easel up there as well. So there's some skill building items. Uh, but I didn't decide to put like any bedrooms or anything too wild up there. But that's something like I had mentioned, you could turn it into other rooms if you download this build. I just thought it was kind of fun to have it as an extra storage space. And then the basement is just where there are some coffins and stuff. I was thinking most of the family members use their bedrooms and sleep in beds. But the oldest Sims here, the grandparents, their room is more so for show, just so it looks like they have a bedroom, but they prefer to sleep in coffins, or maybe they have that particular, what is it called? One of the vampire curses or weaknesses that your Sims can only sleep in coffins. I thought that that was kind of a fun idea. So I wanted to include a few of those in the basement. I believe we have three of them. Uh, there's more than three Sims that live in this household, but I don't think they all want to sleep in coffins. So I only included three downstairs. Oh, and there's one in the front lawn as well, which is a little bit odd, but I also put uh, some like graves in the front yard. So, you know, I, I, a coffin being out there is totally normal. I was just having a lot of fun with this build. I really love vampires in The Sims, in The Sims 4, but just in general in The Sims, they were some of my favorites in The Sims 3. And so it's really fun to build these homes from time to time, especially because I feel like the world that we got with vampires is very inspired by like Victorian architecture and that is one of my favorite types of homes as well. Uh, so getting to do that is always a bit of fun. So I wasn't trying to make this like super dark and black on the outside because I don't know, for some reason I don't like to make my vampires homes like that. Sometimes I do that, but I wanted this to still feel like a welcoming home. Some of the inside is pretty dark because I wanted to have some like paneling on the walls and all of that and it just kind of came together that way but overall I think this home is just like a really pretty Victorian house it has some fun colors in it and uh, the layout is interesting I decided to make the kitchen really small because vampires don't really need a kitchen but I still wanted to have one and like the counters and stuff we got with this pack are gorgeous so I needed to use them so uh, you'll see that in here and I also loved this tower I have on the side of the build with the ivy climbing up it and all of the windows at various heights. I just thought it looked really cute wrapping around there. We also have a side yard. Uh, I end up putting like a swing set and stuff out here. I don't think these sims spend much time outside because they are vampires, but maybe at night they do or there is an ability they can get that like they're okay in the sun. Uh, but I can imagine the kids coming out here and just like swinging at night. That just sounds really cute, but also kind of creepy at the same time, but they are vampires and I, I just really liked the idea of it. So Anyway, I'm adding this tree here, which is also from the Vampire's Pack, and I feel like I never used this tree, but it fit there so perfectly, and I was really excited about it. Uh, also getting lots of other trees out here and trying to figure out which steps I want to use. I really wanted it to be dark, but like with these really bright white touches. Uh, I am using one of the wallpapers from the Werewolves Pack that is a little bit worn down, and I'm using two different versions of it, one where you can see like brown underneath and the other one that's more of a gray tone. 
uh, to just kind of mix and match and show that maybe parts of the home are in a little bit better condition than the rest. Also, you might recognize this home if you do follow me over on Twitch. I did build this on stream this past week uh, and it was so much fun doing this with you all. I think we spent two streams on it. Uh, but if you're curious and would like to join us in the future, I do stream three days a week over on twitch.tv slash and we build a lot of the builds that you see here on my YouTube channel there first. Uh, so it's, it's really fun to just kind of collaborate and chat and come up with things together and then I share them here later. So if you would like to join us, uh, you can follow me over there for free. Like I said, it's just twitch.tv slash and that link is down below. I'd love to have you join us. Anyway, the outside is coming together here. I'm grabbing a coffin to put in the front yard because why not? And then in debug, there are these little like dirt piles you'll see in a second when I grab them uh, that look like a recently buried grave. So I put those over here with a couple of tombstones at the front. I also scaled up that little archway at the front of the build to kind of, I don't know, give a little bit more of a grand entrance to this yard. I thought it looked quite nice. I got a little bench over there as well, just trying to add a bunch of details to the exterior, but... Uh, not go too overboard. Also, the plants I put over here, I end up moving because that is going to be where the staircase is outside that leads you to the basement. I decided instead of having the basement connected to the inside, it would be kind of cool to have it on the outside. I don't do that very often, so I decided to today, and now we are inside working on the floor plan. So I cut out a lot of footage because I could not figure out where to put anything, but I love the placement of these stairs here, and I needed to get a second staircase to head to the attic. So that took a little bit of fiddling as well. And uh, I'm glad I'm able to cut some footage out because it's it's just a lot sometimes. It really, really is. But uh, <laughs> it came out really cute in the end. Anyway, this is how we are figuring out the floor plan. Basically, you walk into a little hallway. There is going to be a living room off to the side. The staircase is in the dining room, a small kitchen out back. We have a small office and a tiny bathroom down here. So it's a pretty small like half of the house, a couple of the rooms are really small, but the ones that are more important, which I would say are probably the living room and I guess the dining room, even though your Sims aren't going to be really eating much unless you have humans living here. Uh, but that is a table for them to like do work and stuff at as well. I, I feel like I did a good job at <laughs> figuring out the sizing of everything. I really wasn't sure because I don't know, I, kitchens are my favorite, but vampires really don't need a big kitchen. So I was happy with the floor plan that I came up with, but anyway, just adding a chimney on the outside here to kind of correspond with where I put or was planning to put a fireplace here in the living room. This fireplace is from Vampires and it is so pretty. I also really wanted to use this wallpaper in here, that like really busy wallpaper, but I didn't end up using it in the end because it just didn't feel like it fit. Uh, so I will be getting rid of that, but the paneling in there, perfect. I just, I love it. Anyway, I think we're going to start with the kitchen because I always start with the kitchen. I did use these cabinets and countertops from Vampires, but I will be switching them to the white and black swatch in the end because I just felt like the green wasn't working and I found a green wallpaper that did work. So uh, changing the swatches here made that work so much better because they were different swatches of green. So they kind of clashed, but this is so pretty once again, also from Vampires. And then that rug is from the Werewolves pack and it just matched beautifully. I love how simple this kitchen is. I just have some cobwebs around, so maybe they haven't been using stuff as often. Uh, getting some curtains. I believe we get some flowers and stuff in here as well. Uh, it's a really simple kitchen, but I think it really came out beautiful, and I love this wallpaper. I don't use it that often. I really feel like I should. For some reason, I forget about the wallpapers from vampires unless I'm building a vampire home, and I really should use them in other homes too because they are gorgeous. Anyway, I did add a little counter lamp in here. Something about just adding a little lamp in the kitchen is so cute. And I've I've been seeing like so many people talk about that, like on TikTok in particular. And so I was like, you know what? That would be really cute in this room. So that's what I did. Anyway, in the living room now, and I really wanted to have a TV in here. So what I did is to make it kind of fit, I grabbed this painting of Vlad, rotated it sideways, and then... Uh, moved a TV and merged it in. I did that all with the tool mod by Twisted Mexi. That is always linked down below. And that way it didn't look so out of place to have a big TV in this space. And uh, that is how that came together. I think it looks really cute. And uh, this is where I'm changing the paneling to be all wood paneling instead of that wild wallpaper. And I am kind of going with a mixture of traditional Victorian and like modern 
For the interior of this build, so you can see we have like these modern couches and this rug, but I have this gorgeous chair in the corner, this more traditional coffee table, and I believe I get, oh yeah, I got this lantern, or not lantern, this chandelier, which is from Vintage Glamour. It's so pretty. And I get a couple of bookcases back here as well that match perfectly with the wood tone of this room. I just think the living room came out really nice in the end. I also added a grandfather clock over here as well as a plant and some wood by the fireplace and just like a couple of other little touches. But anyway, moving into the dining room now and I'm pulling in those same curtains that I pretty much put everywhere else and doing another thing where I'm combining this more traditional element with the modern elements where I have uh, these fancy chairs on the ends of the table, but these really modern, simple ones as the rest of the chairs. I like mixing and matching things like that. I think it looks really nice. And those flowers are gorgeous. The swatch of those that have like purple, red, and black, that is from my wedding stories. And I just thought it was exactly what I wanted for a vampire dining room. So I was quite happy with that. But moving on into the entryway now, using more of this dark paneling, I uh, just end up having a couple of things in here. I didn't want it to be too complicated. We have a mirror by the door, a place to sit, a couple of decorations here and there. Uh, I believe, yeah, we have an urn over here as well. I ended up using the red shelf to place that better uh, because sometimes using the nine and zero keys, if things are floating because not every surface in the game is exactly <laughs> at the same intervals. So I did that and then just got a little painting over there little plant in the corner and we should be, yeah, grabbing this a little side table as well to put a record player on. I thought it looked really cute here. I was quite happy with this entryway. It's very simple, but I feel like it came together in the gargoyle on the wall. You walk in and you're like, yes, this is a vampire's house. Anyway, this is going to be the office space. I just added another window in here because it felt a little awkward and you could definitely add some more windows in this space. It didn't look weird from outside adding that. I'm using the space game desk and chair. And this computer that kind of looks like a typewriter, it came from Cottage Living. I thought it was perfect in this space. And that little like dresser piece, I don't know what to call it, like I guess a hutch, uh, also came with vampires in the background and it has like some medicines and a skull in it. And I just thought it was so perfect. And I also squeezed this giant bookcase in here. It's a little cramped in this particular office, but I really liked it. So I decided to keep it. Uh, but before we head upstairs, I am building our basement now. You can see this is where I added it on the outside of the build. Uh, it ends up being really simple down here. I just wanted a space for your Sims to have some coffins. So uh, there is a door and a organ down here. I just I decided the organ needed to go in the basement. I think probably because Vlad's house, the organ is in the basement. And I didn't really find a space upstairs that it fit based on every other thing I put as decorations. And you don't need the organ by any means, but I thought it was kind of a fun idea. So I did that. I also added a couple of rugs down here, some cobwebs, and then we are upstairs on the top floor now, or not the top floor. There's an attic above this. So I guess uh, the second floor, this is going to be the primary bedroom, of course, using the bed that came with the vampires pack in this gorgeous red swatch. I really, really like it. I will be changing the color of the love seat though because it's way too vibrant of a red. They are clashing, so uh, no worries on that. And then adding those really pretty um, bedside table lamps that I used throughout the whole build. I really like those. They're in like every room, so you'll see a lot of those in this space. And uh, of course, getting those flowers again. This gorgeous mirror. I just I I love this space. I also added a chimney or a fireplace in there because the chimney is right outside that room. So I was figuring that that would make sense to have another fireplace. And then the rooms over here. So the room in the front that we're about to work on that I moved stuff out of this one. This is the grandparents room that I was thinking is mostly just for show. They probably don't really use it. Uh, so I just wanted it to look li not lived in, but like it had everything it needed, but they probably don't use it. And then the one behind it is where I was thinking there was the daughter that had a baby. So uh, there is a double bed in there as well as a bassinet. And I wasn't really sure which bassinet I wanted to use at first. You'll see that I had grabbed the one from Vampires, but also the one from Realm of Magic as well, because the Realm of Magic one is just so pretty. And I think I ended up going for that one in the end, even though we have a Vampires one. I, I think it's fine. I'm not too upset about it. So Anyway, this is us finishing up this room. I just have a bunch of random furniture in here and some paintings up above the bed. 
and we're moving into that room I had mentioned for the daughter or son. I, I'm not sure which, but obviously them and their significant other live in this room with their newborn baby because we don't have infants yet. So that it's a baby bassinet, not a crib. I'm so excited for infants. I can't wait. I, I really want cribs in this game so badly. And I kind of doubt it, but I really hope toddlers can use the cribs as well. So you can kind of have the storyline of like them getting their first toddler bed. And I keep saying that, but I just, I'm so excited. Anyway, I made a fake changing table over here because obviously you can't really use those uh, yet until the next expansion pack and the cute little bassinet in the corner. And I also thought maybe they have dreams of moving to the city. So I put a city poster in there. Anyway, this is the youngest child's room. I was thinking they really liked pink and black and I had a lot of fun combining those colors together. I think it's a really cute room. I, I love this little bat stuffed animal in the corner. I had to include that. And we got like just a bunch of fun colored things in here and some stuffed animals, lots of artwork. This little toy chest is adorable with all the little stickers on it. And I got some butterflies on the walls as well. Uh, it's nothing too complicated in here. I just wanted to have lots of black and pink. And I believe the last thing I add is a mirror before we head up to the attic space. Oh, and this little decoration. I forgot about that piece. Uh, so yeah, we're in the attic now. I will be changing the flooring and the walls to look a little bit more worn down and dated. Uh, but I'm mostly just adding a bunch of like crates and boxes and cracks and tears and cobwebs and all of that sort of stuff. It's a pretty big attic space, but I wanted it to look like, you know, it's currently just storage. We have like an old bookcase. Uh, we have some like spilled papers and stuff on the floor, some old rugs. It, it's a lot of space. It's just like an awkward layout though. So uh, it, it would be fun to try and renovate this and turn it into something, but I decided for the purposes of this build, I didn't really have ideas of what I wanted to put up here. Uh, I just think it would be cool to maybe renovate it down the line and turn it into something else. So we have this little art space at the end with some uh, newspapers on the floor, some sketches up, and then I'm just adding some like cracks and stuff up here as well. I believe we get a little dresser in this nook just to fill it in. Oh, I got rid of it. Never mind. <laughs> and then just adding some curtains over here. I think it came out really cute in the end. I, I was pretty happy with it, especially that cracked mirror from werewolves. I don't know why. I just really like that. I also got some random artwork up here. It's just items all over the place. And uh, I was quite happy with it. So let me know what you think of this attic space. Do you ever decorate attics like this? Would you have included this attic? I was like adamant about including it, even though there wasn't something specific I wanted to put up there. I just kind of wanted to have a creepy attic and I think that worked for this house. Anyway, uh, just decorating the upstairs hallway now at the top of the steps. And then all we have left is the three bathrooms. I think I only show one of them. I think I cut out the footage for the rest, but... Uh, they're all pretty similar. I'm using this base game tile on the walls paired with this floor tile from high school years in a black and blue swatch. I think it's really pretty. I, I was really happy with the color combo in here. And the toilet sink and shower are all from the vampires pack. So they all match pretty well. And uh, yeah, very, very simple bathrooms. I didn't think they needed too much more than that. Uh, oh, yeah, I added a, I added a uh, circle window to that one, which I thought was so pretty. And I added some more graves in this yard because I was like, what should I put here? I'm going to put some more tombstones. Great. Lovely. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm doing here. And then just kind of finishing up the landscaping. And that should be pretty much it for this build. We need a couple more shrubs out here and a table for your Sims to sit at if they decide to eat outside. I'm assuming at nighttime. Like I said, I don't think these Sims use their outdoor space very much, but they do have some of it, which is quite fun. Uh, so yeah, just getting some more of those flowers, which I think are so pretty in that pale yellow swatch and this little, um, actually really pretty picnic bench. I believe this one is from Romantic Garden. And then we're heading on into screenshots. I really hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and click that bell to be notified of every single time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the screenshots. Bye everyone.